Never fail systems do not exist. I did it. I dropped that bomb. Never fail systems do not exist. As much as we want to pretend they do, they're a myth. I'm Katie Tierney. That's Kevin Smith. And today we're going to unravel that myth. I need a little bit of input from the team here. I have been in the industry a very long time and I have seen a lot of trends. I don't know if you recall this one, Kevin, but did you know the mainframe's going away? That's what they say. I, I've heard that one. I've seen the move to client yep. server architectures. I've seen the move to virtualization. All of these trends have just happened over the last three decades. The three that are up here on the screen though are interesting to me because I've really only seen them in the past, let's say three years. So if I step back and think about when I joined BMC back in 2009, I didn't have a single customer tell me, Katie, I want to accelerate innovation. They told me, Katie, I have to save money. It wasn't about accelerating innovation. As you saw from Carlos's presentation today, this is a number one priority for customers all over the world. The second thing was the move to the cloud, making my infrastructure somebody else's problem. That was not something people were doing back in 2009. In fact, what people wanted to do in 2009 was protect everything, keep it on premises. They were looking at virtualization, but they weren't really looking at virtualizing it in somebody else's cloud. And then lastly, cybersecurity. I, could you even spell cybersecurity in 2009? I would venture to say that for you folks out here in the audience, back in 2009, you probably still had a password that was password 11. Or if you were really, really smart, password bang with the exclamation point at the end. Mine was the dollar sign. Oh. You need to get the dollar sign. Yes. Yeah, that's elite speak for any of you nerds out there. Yeah. That was what we were, you know, what we were thinking about. Today, cybersecurity is fundamental to everybody. And it is a trend where we're seeing people adopt all sorts of zero trust type policies to ensure that their cybersecurity risk is well managed. So these trends are what we're seeing today. They're going to be different in the future. So we need to understand how to build a foundation that will allow you to grow to meet these trends and the ones that we haven't even imagined yet. And that's connected digital ops, which you saw today. What makes BMC unique when we talk about connected digital ops is that we are the only organization in enterprise software who can help provide connected digital ops from the mainframe all the way to the edge. That's what we do. And we do it to help you transform digital experiences. Who in this audience is famous? Everybody should be raising their <laughs> hand. Everybody is famous. At least in your organization, you're famous. I don't want to be famous. <laughs> but you are. Because people are reaching out. They need you to do things. They need you. That's actually good. I like that one. They need you, though. They need you because there are so many challenges. You've got a talent gap. You see that one? It's coming. You've got all sorts of information. Did you know that for each person, each of the seven and a half billion people on Earth, we create 100 megabytes of data every minute? Seven and a half billion people, 100 megabytes every minute. Think about the scale there. And that's the scale that is making you famous. That is the scale that is making people want a piece of your time. And then tie into it the fact that we have edge devices and we have mainframes that support it. All of those things, they're complex challenges. You have to, to transform that digital experience. Again, something that Carlos talked about. Everybody is about transforming digital experience, whether it's for their employees or their customers. And you've got all those challenges that you're stuck with trying to, to deal with. I have another quick question for y'all. I want you to raise your hand. This is audience participation. It is mandatory. Yep. Absolutely mandatory. Okay, how many of you have five applications on your little edge device that's sitting in your pocket? At least five. Okay, keep it up. 10, 30. Wow, Maurice, you don't. Oh, wow. <laughs> he keeps his clean. 50. I have no idea what's loaded on that one. Yeah. There you go. A lot. A lot. 
I, I counted mine last night. I had 144 applications on my little phone. Yeah, and that's my Edge device. And I've got these really cute little cloud native apps. But I also have other apps. So think about that, Kevin. What apps do you have that actually are cute little mobile apps that hook onto a mainframe at the back end? Mainframe right. to Edge. So how many in here use credit card today? 90% of all credit card transactions worldwide are back-ended by a mainframe. That's, it, it, how many made a reservation at a hotel within the last two weeks? That reservation system was back-ended by a mainframe. Who was on a plane via United, Delta, uh, American? Southwest. All mainframe on the back end of that reservation system. Every time you change or change your flight, check in, that's all done and back-ended by a mainframe. And that's what makes you famous, because you've got to figure out how to transform that mainframe into a digital experience. Yep. And, and that change is really, really, really important. Change is hugely important. Yep. We want to ask another audience participation. Um, you want to ask the question sure. about what, what does your infrastructure look like? Sure. Well, I would hope if you're in this session that there is a mainframe somewhere in your IT environment. Uh, show of hands. Yes. Any in here that do not have a mainframe? Just one? All right, well, welcome. Maybe we'll get you over at some point. But, They're uh, very powerful. <laughs> uh, all right, so um, show of hands, mainframe. Anyone want to share? Uh, we heard a lot uh, this morning about innovation and change and accepting risk and evolving. Uh, anybody care to share how the mainframe fits into their, their overall IT structure today? Anybody? Yep. All the numbers are in the mainframe yeah. That's right. There you go. So it, I mentioned 90% of all credit card transactions, just a few sets. Uh, how much of the world's data do you think resides on a mainframe? It's over 80%. 80% of all data that Katie talked about that's growing. I'm sure Chase is, might even be more than that. Could be from a mainframe data perspective. So the. The mainframe is more critical in our overall IT infrastructures today than it's ever been. Uh, BMC conducts a mainframe survey that we've been doing now for over 20 years. And over that time, it's grown to this year we had over 800 respondents, some BMC customers, some not. But it gives us an, an idea to hear from you, the customers, how does the mainframe play in your environment? Where does it sit? Is it growing? Is it shrinking? Is it in a silo? Is it critical to your infrastructure? Are you uh, updating, writing new applications, changing your DevOps processes? There's all sorts of questions that we ask in this survey. And we uh, just released the 2023 version just recently. We have a webinar tomorrow. Uh, if you scan that QR code, you can register for the webinar and you can hear all the, the dirty details about the mainframe survey and everything that you'd like to know. So that's tomorrow. So if you'd like to to attend that webinar, please scan the QR code. And I wanna hit just a few highlights. W what I would tell you is, because of 20 years of data, we can see some trends. And what we, s we have seen is the mainframe has never been more strong within our customers' organizations than ever before. Uh, we're starting to see customers that, uh, what we're not seeing is customers leaving the platform completely. Uh, it's very, very rare now that we see customers making a wholesale shift to remove the mainframe from their environments. Uh, we have actually seen customers that start that journey and then U-turn and go back and take a different strategy. We've seen that in, uh, in two customers that I've talked to just in the last couple weeks. Chase, that happened with you? Yeah, yeah. Right, yeah, yep. So well, it's, uh, it's a real thing. We're also seeing customers who are using mainframe to their competitive advantage these days in a different right. way than we did probably 10 years ago. So with those trends, right, you have two, I would, what we would group uh, our mainframe customers into two different categories, and you'll, you'll get more details on this in the survey itself, is you have minimizers and maximizers is how we classify them. Maximizers are those customers that are taking advantage of the platform and using it as a competitive advantage starting to take it out of a siloed type of infrastructure and work it over into their overall uh, application development strategy and how do we incorporate you know, business services that we want to offer to our customers to drive revenue and how do we leverage all that wonderful data that we have on the mainframe. 
Uh, you have another group that we call minimizers, and, and what we see those are, those are the ones that are, are not leaving the platform, but are just quite haven't really figured out what they want to do yet. Um, and you run into situations where um, you, those customers tend to be a little more reactive, and that's a scary position because by trying not to change anything or, or stay status quo, you introduce risk by no, no action at all. Uh, another customer that we met with last week, they, uh, and it's a, this is a company, if I told you their name, everyone in here would know them. They uh, had a company-wide um, early retirement package offered across their company. And the demographic of their mainframe group met a lot of these criteria, and a lot of the mainframers in that group chose that early retirement. And this gentleman said that within 60 days, he had over a thousand years of mainframe skills walk out the door. That's a millennium. A thousand years. Now, not only that, not only mainframe skills, but most of those people had been with the organization for 20 and 30 years. So now you've got all that intellectual capital that you, how they know the applications and know the systems. And when something goes down over here, that means I need to look over here to correct the problem all that walks out the door. So it's something that you need to be very proactive. You need to start thinking about how to be proactive in this situation, so. The risk um, of change outweighs it, the risk of not changing, or vice versa. Absolutely. Not changing outweighs the risk of changing. Right, right. And when we think of operations and mainframe in general, this, this, this uh, pride in, you know, always available, performance is amazing, ability to recover faster than any other platform, being resilient, you know, these, this operational excellence is a sense of pride. But at times, we see it become more important than providing services to the business. And there seems to, there can be a, a sense of inflexibility from organizations outside the mainframe platform when it becomes more important to deliver availability than it is to listen to what the customer needs and provides. Another small story, Another customer just recently came to, came to us and said, you know, I'm, I'm losing business in the marketplace. My competitor is beating me and they're just buying the business. They're just buying the business. And we talked a little bit more about it and it was, okay, so what, are, what exactly are they doing? Well, well, we have this very robust system. It's highly customizable. It can meet any requirement that's needed. It takes a while to get it up and running and installed, but it, it can do a thousand different things exactly how you want it. And my, comp and my competitor has something that's smaller, it's not as robust, it's not as, as uh, uh, sophisticated as my system, but my customers are gravitating towards that. And it's like, well, okay, so have you thought about maybe offering new services? Well, if we do that, there's changes that we have to introduce and the amount of risk is something that makes us nervous. And so it's that, it's that adherence to not wanting to take on risk that is now preventing them from actually winning business in the marketplace. So it's, it's real, it's real. But there are customers out there that are embracing change. And so if you think about customers looking, we heard it this morning, like Carlos mentioned it several times. You know, how do we look at accepting, knowing risk is coming, know it's, let's plan for it, let's make sure we understand it. Let's see how we can incorporate and look at how what we do from a development perspective on the mainframe, rather than move a, uh, an application off that isn't suited to move off the platform, let's look at how we can approach that and, and maybe change the way that we uh, look at how we, we manage that development cycle, move it more into an agile state, and we use that to incorporate it into our overall uh, development life cycle. You know, these are changes that happen. How do we incorporate AI? How do we leverage automation into our testing processes. These are all ways that customers are looking to gain an advantage with their mainframe over their competition. And, and never fail really comes from a mainframe type mindset. So when you think about you know, that United Airlines mainframe application better not go down. Well, it does though. And the important piece, and Carlos mentioned this as well, is to be able to fail fast and to be able to predict outages before they happen and use automation to remediate that. So I said it before, I'll say it again, never fail systems do not exist. But you can have the ability to fail fast and to predict what's going on. And that's where BMC has, again, fundamentally changed the market 
with our end-to-end -end observability that goes from mainframe all the way to the edge. It's a platform that allows you to monitor, it allows you to engage, it allows you to automate, and it does it all from a single piece of technology. You're not taking six different applications and putting them together with bubble gum and bailing wire. These are built on the same platform. And that platform allows you to see things faster and to resolve them faster. Again, so that you can monitor, you can engage, and you can automate. Now, interestingly enough, you can't monitor or engage or automate anything if you don't know where it is, if you don't understand how your infrastructure supports the services that you're providing, um, you're going to fail. <laughs> it's not a never fail, it's a when am I going to fail. I have a customer story not that long ago where a customer is in just-in-time manufacturing to support other suppliers and they had an outage on one of their production lines. The outage was tied to a server they found after the fact. They weren't doing any type of automated discovery so that they would see what was actually on their environment. They weren't doing that. And so it took it down, took down the production system, took them a while to find it, cost them about $2 million in penalties to their customer because their just-in-time manufacturing went down. Those are the, the types of things that can happen if you don't know and you don't understand. And if you don't understand what's on the mainframe all the way to what's on the edge, something will break in that system and you'll be stuck because you, you won't have known about it. You won't have been able to leverage AI ops to help you actually, um, actually understand it. One of the things I want to point out, and I probably should have pointed it out on the last slide, but I'm going to point it out on this slide. This is all underpinned by generative artificial intelligence. So how many of you are familiar with ChatGPT? Have you used it? I, I used it to write haikus about service management. That's, yeah, <laughs> that's pretty fun. But it's interesting because what we've done with GPT over the past two years is we've built out Helix GPT, which is the industry's first and most comprehensive domain-specific large language model. What does that mean? We, I think Rom talked a little bit about it earlier today. Um, it provides you with a trusted data set, with one that is ethical and not going to hallucinate things that are completely I mean, we all know what a hallucination is. That the uh, artificial intelligence systems do that too. But this is all built on this foundation of Helix GPT that allows our customers to take that base model and use it to start learning from their own environments. So understanding what's in the environment, understanding how we're actually going forward with um, the alerts and the, the, the events that are coming in and tying it all together. So that's a really big piece of what we're doing. And then the other piece of what we do here is around the automation. Absolutely, and it, it goes back to, uh, again, we're, we're preaching a lot about change here and about looking at new ways to do things and, and the risk of not changing ways that outweighs that journey on your, to, to move towards doing something different and looking at how do we protect ourselves from that sysprog that's been there for 20, 30 years and knows how to adjust and monitor a system and take action when you have to replace that person with someone different. Uh, so we want to be able to rely on automation within our, org within our mainframe environment so that we can, we can build our enterprise for the long term. Uh, testing is the same way. How do we automate testing? How do we look at shifting left and making our, our, uh, our compartmentalize our testing a little bit more, our development a little bit better so that we can uh, make changes without bringing down the systems. So it's, it's something that's here to stay. Yeah, it yep. definitely is. So I'll wrap it up for us, yeah. Kevin, talk a little bit about so, where to go next. Right, so the, the thing I would say, like you said, we talk about on the mainframe side of the house as make change your advantage. Look at how you can use your systems to create a competitive advantage and win business. And the technology exists today to help you do that. BMC can do that with you all the way from the mainframe to the edge. Yeah. And I'll close with how I opened it. Never fail systems do not exist. They are a myth. But hopefully some of what we talked about today will allow you to unwind that myth and think about how you can fail faster in your organizations to provide the services that you need to provide. And we do have a <laughs> you're, you're our MC right now, Jeremy. Uh, we do have a microphone. If anybody has questions, you want to learn a little bit more about what we're doing around any of these capabilities or technologies, feel free. 
Any any takers? Yeah, uh, we can't see. So yeah, I know. <laughs> we're blind up here. All right. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate it. You can see this in action down in the AI Ops booth downstairs uh, during the cocktail hour. So please stop by and take a look at how this actually comes to fruition. Thanks. Awesome. Thank you.